Ladies and gentlemen on the Shred Gaming Silicon video, we finally have an idea of what the pricing will be for Intel's next generation of CPUs known as the Skylake S. So, these prices are actually based on pre-order prices with an online retailer known as PC Connection. And they are in US dollar prices. Now, these prices are fluctuating a little bit. To give you an example, the 6700K actually went up about ten dollars uh, since I originally looked compared to now so uh, let's start out with the i5-6400 which is going to be two hundred and eleven dollars um, the 6500 227 dollars the 6600 251 dollars the 6600k which of course is what I think most people are going to go, want to go for if they're planning on overclocking anyway. Uh, that's going to be twenty-seven. Uh, sorry, two hundred and seventy-three dollars. Uh, which, of course, this is going to be comparable to the forty-six ninety K, which was actually considerably cheaper on its debut. It was around two hundred and forty US dollars. Then the sixty-seven hundred, which will cost you about three hundred and fifty-one. Um, but the big one, the 6700K, is currently pre-order price of 400 US dollars. This actually compares to the 4790, which cost around 340. Now there are a couple of points here. The first is that you've got to remember that these are pre-order prices, so the actual final prices might be a bit change. It might change a little bit. And I, I don't necessarily really feel that these are exactly what we're going to be seeing. Um, but it's just a good point to kind of bear in mind if it, it does cost a little bit more. Of course, these processors are the successor to the Broadwell architecture. And eventually, these processors will be shrunk down to 10NM, which will be known as Cannon Lake. Now, these processors are actually quite interesting for many because... Well, it's going to be supporting both DDR3 and DDR4. It's going to be almost like the transition point between the two architectures. This isn't really super new. Um, ASRock, back in the day when DDR1 and DDR2 were a thing, and it, it's happened several other times as well, where vendors and boards and processors have definitely been compatible with different memory um, architectures simply because, you know... It's rather expensive otherwise, let's say you've got a lot of really good memory and you're not really wanting to sync it all in. It, it's a good way to kind of put your foot in the door. Obviously, if you're running DDR4, there's a very good chance that you're going to get better performance, particularly if you're using the IGP, the Integrated Graphics Processor. Now, there is some information regarding the performance of these cards, but just how accurate it is, I don't really know. Um, I have put... A link in the video description which takes you to an article that we did a couple of weeks back well actually it was in very late April basically May um, and these leaks were supposedly from engineering samples of the 6700k and other processors in the lineup and it shows that there are obviously improvements over the previous generation roughly 10% um, using the 3d mark score but, for example, the 6700K scored 11,515, whereas the 4790 hit just over 10,000. So, yes, it's an improvement. Is it a massive improvement? Probably not. I don't think many people are going to be, like, losing sleep over it. But when you, one considers, once again, that this memory... Uh, sorry, you will be able to utilize, most likely... Your previous memory, obviously, it does depend. If you've got really old DDR3, you're probably not going to really want to be served by this. But if you've got some really good DDR3 memory, some fast memory, then you could potentially consider that uh, as like an interim. But anyway, hopefully you've enjoyed the video. I've got to say, I'm still rocking on one of my main rigs, a 4770K. And... <clears throat> Is the 6600K going to be worth it for me to upgrade? Maybe. I, I think for me it's going to really depend on what the temperatures end up being. Like what can you actually overclock the bloody things to. I have no interest at all of course in the integrated performance. So for me it's, it's purely going to be 
how well do they overclock what key benefits are there and what is, what's the you know are there any bugs um, I, I got bitten when I originally bought the 2500k I got hit with the SATA bug you know where the SATA controller kind of breaks and I've got to admit unless there's a massive disparity between the previous generation and the new generation for the most part if I'm buying for myself and not you know getting stuff for a view typically I'll try and wait a month or two to see if there's any major problems with the architecture just because so honestly I'm not really certain if it's massively worth it to kind of jump onto the new map bandwagon at the start but then again if the um, motherboards are pretty solid if we've got a good platform if the processors once again have a good overclocking potential run fairly cool then maybe I'll jump in I don't know we'll see I guess anyway hopefully you've enjoyed the video I'll see you soon take care bye for now